hello guys and welcome to my channel i'm back at it again i'm excited to be bringing you this message let me first of all um give you guys an apology with regards to my last video the lighting is quite bad i am so sorry guys and i promise to keep trying to do better okay guys going on today's message um as we are facing guys i'm sorry there's a bit of thunder outside I mean lightning and rumbling so you might be uh, able to hear it excuse me about that again as we like i was saying that guys um there's this going on of the 16 days of activism against the gender-based violence and i thought that this since this is such an important week universal wise um i should come ahead and share a message with you guys or rather and an encouragement to my fellow christians and you know what to everyone else there who cares to listen um i'd like to start off by just saying that you know that as this isn't particularly targeted to instances of us as christians or anybody else who's just trying to live a good life that the enemy has a tendency of using certain people or even sending his agents forth so that they can come and provoke you and steal your peace and those stealing of those that kind of peace in this instances is what we are faced with today which is the 16 days of activism which is the abuse that is directed towards women and young children but for me i'm not particularly saying women only i'm also going to say just to humanity because there's that you know that abuse that is also spread across it's only that the women and children seem to be the most weaker uh kind of people in this instance hence the recognition um you know guys as christians for example or just as an ordinary person just trying to live a good life there will be somebody out there or the enemy out there and they will just want to steal your peace somehow and sometimes when he wants to steal your peace it could be through insults you know it could be through abuses it could be certain kinds of abuses if you take for example to young children you look at the orphans who would be abused by those who have remained with them to be support who are supposed to be their caretakers if you look at instances of marriages some marriages the woman would be abused or the man would be abused either financially financially or physically and then if you look at other forms of abuses you find those kind of abuses manifesting for example with even the workplace you know the professional world where you are abused within your workplace you understand and the other kind of abuses would be just generally within the family or even where you come from those kind of abuses are just that broad guys and the thing that I have realized, which I've even, you know, like observed even with my other fellow Christians and my other fellow friends is that like there is also this time where there's a perception where uh, certain people and the enemy himself says that as a Christian, you should just be a doormat for those abuses. Guys, I'm here to tell you that as according to my perception and anyway, that's how the way I've lived my life and it seems to be working again. You're not a doormat. You understand? You are not a doormat. You know, Christ created us in his image and we are, we, you know, like we are heirs to his kingdom. No one is supposed to come and abuse anybody. You understand? There's no one who is superior than anyone else. Anyone who imposes abuse is laboring under the evil spirits of the enemy of the devil. You understand? So... If you're abused, don't just stand there and be like, oh, I'm a Christian, you know, like, if they if they do this to me, then I need to keep quiet because Christ say that if they do this to you, then you should turn the other cheek to you. And then they also say, another scripture that I always hear is, some say, you know, as a Christian, even if you are you are abused or you are troubled or, you know, you, you should just be like Christ when he was going to be crucified on the cross, they spat on him and he said nothing. So some people, there are generally some people who live their lives out there. They just let abuse, you understand, keep going. They let abuse like they, they would be, the take for example, the, the common abuses since I'm married and I've had to relate with other women who are married. And then you come across them, they tell you that they have their spouses and the spouses doesn't take care of them, uh, their duties in the home, like taking care of the kids and helping out and doing what he's supposed to do. And they're saying it's okay 
you know it's okay because he's the head of the family you know they will say they can't do anything about it and you're just like really is that what christ intended when he said that the head of the, the man is the head of the family does it mean that the man should come and abuse you understand i could imagine such an instance like i say wow this god that i i serve so much is so great and whatever he does for me and my family is just so amazing so it will just contradict itself for me to hear someone say that but their spouse does this and they're saying that when they're acting they're exercising their authority that they've been given by god to come and be heads of their family well to my understanding heads of the families are the protectors you understand it's like the lion and the he, he takes care of his his lioness and his cubs you understand and then if you have a spouse who's doing that or a partner who is doing that or a mother who is doing that and then you just sit there at the end of the day you're saying that you are being Christ maybe because you are preaching God you are being a good Christian uh -uh, guys let us not confuse those kind of things I would just like to quote scripture which I believe you know coincides with this whole topic um take for example in first corinthians 13 verse 7 and in matthew 5 verse 39 where i know they're talking about taking the other cheek that verse should not be interpreted to mean negativity you know the, the 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 bible shouldn't be interpreted to mean that now i can take the bible and i can start whipping people with it whipping people with it because the word of god can never mean evil especially to to us his children you understand the word of god is only supposed to work against the enemy and his agents that's all it's supposed to work against so if someone is taking the bible and using it against you to abuse you you have a right to say no 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 that is not the kingdom of god and what kind of a kingdom would you want if we are striving so hard to go to heaven and then we get to heaven to find that this god actually is just misery you know so and also um yeah i call that a dormant mentality i'd like to share with you guys something that i something that i i i, I read recently you know and uh, it's by a certain person called, called aline stevens and this person is explaining the whole concept you know like of you are not a dormant just because you're a christian you should take get rid of the dormant mentality stand bold and stand firm as a christian you shouldn't be bullied around tossed around just because you're a christian no and this is what they're saying There's, he says that biblical service is not mindless it's not robot-like obedience to demands of others it is intentional and life-giving the giver and the receiver are better people because of the act of compassion it cultivates unity, closeness, and goodness in others that moves relationships in a positive direction. You see, it like for for for, for guys, you know, there's let let us talk about the instance of obedience, and let us talk, for example, the instance of sub submission. If you're a wife, you're supposed to submit to your husband. But it has to be in line with, I believe it has to be in line with the way this person actually ex explains it. In that the relationship between you and your spouse, the relationship between you and your mother, the relationship between you and your co-workers, if it is done, you know, it should be, it, it should be done to cultivate unity between the two of you guys. It should be done to a positive direction. Okay. So you can take, for example, instances of, let's take, for example, the instances of living in a setup or a certain home. And you find that probably there is somebody there who is just the breadwinner. And you know that in some instances like that, not in every home that is like that, you find that the that person actually, you know what, has the final say to everything. So they come, they say this, you're supposed to obey. They come and say this, they are supposed to obey. But guys, know that no matter what but you know what no matter where you are in the position that you are in your life is it financially or otherwise know that no one has authority to walk over you just know that you are so important to god you understand you are so important to god that when he looks at you he's just saying wow look at my mother 
Look at this beautiful creation. You understand? All that the Lord is working, the same path that that person has gone through, God has also something, have got, has got something good for you. You understand? It's only that this race is, is, it's not for the fastest. You know, this race is run by people of this race of life. When I say this race, I mean the race of life, you know, like the life that we live. We get to our destination at different instances. So never be threatened just because somebody is, is saying that, oh, I'm at a certain standing in life, so I can do whatever. No, refuse that evil spirit. Refuse that. No one has the right to intimidate you. No one has the right to create fear in your life. Take, for example, the young women, the young women, and nowadays it's even young men who come to the work, you know, like you finish university or you finish your schooling and then you come into the work environment. Already you get that the enemy has decided. He wants you to get you within clicks that are not, that, that are not even not clicks of the Lord. You understand? He wants you to get into the office politics that you don't even know anything about. And if you have a dormant mentality, when you get somewhere, you will be walked over. Because trust me, somebody who starts to do evil and they in initiate you into coming to do it, never think that they cannot do it to you. So for example, you get into that work environment. All you know is it's all about the gossips. Or you are told who to hate within the work environment. You are told who to talk to within the work environment. When they say to you, oh, go make tea for us. And now you are running around like a headless chicken. You have even forgotten that you hold a degree. And then you're just, your hope is pinned on this certain people who are saying to you, if you don't do this, then you ain't getting a job. Well, hey, you ain't God. That's the last time I checked you ain't God. You need to have a bold mindset, guys. You have to have a bold mindset. You know what? I, just in my life, I just, God gave me the grace to realize that no matter what a human being can promise to do for you. You know, a human being, they will promise you that I can give you this promotion. I can give you this job. I can give you this. It can never be as best as what God can give you. The day you decide to use a dormant mentality and imprison yourself to live into the standards of people and letting them control you, know that you are finished. Know that you are finished. I know that for a fact, yes, some will say that this God that you pray to takes forever. Let me tell you, he might take forever, yes, sometimes, but it's because he's molding you for the greatness that he is intending for your life. And the day he releases that blessing, you will understand to say, oh, yeah. Oh, now I understand why. You understand? So guys, let us get rid of our, uh, 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 our dormant mentality. Let us get rid of it. Everything and where, uh, whoever tries, is, tries to abuse you, be it in your home, be it in, be it in you know, within your, your relatives, be it within the, your, your work environments, be it anywhere in life. Guys, you need to stand firm and say that, no, 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 no. I am so important. I cannot be treated this way. You understand? I know that that on its own cannot change the third person to treating you better, but it is so important. When you understand your worth, you understand so much to say that I will not sell out for anything because the enemy just wants to see you low. The enemy wants to see you begging. The enemy wants to see you hopeless. The enemy wants to see you as a dormant because if you have a dormant mentality, you are weak and he will misuse you. But when you have a mentality of Christ, the mentality just that says, you know what? I am so important. I am so important. It might not be so evident to the naked eye. I might be wearing the same kind of clothes every day. I might be driving an old, old car. I might be sweeping the toilets and cleaning the streets, but I am so, so important. You said, guys, that kind of power is so powerful. That kind of power when you say I am so important and you focus it on Christ, Christ will dig you out. He will pull you out. Do not have a men, a, a, you know, a, 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 a dormant mentality. Refuse it. Married women, you are not supposed to have a dormant mentality. The enemy will steal that joy from you so that you end up what? You end up giving up on God and his institution of marriage. You understand? Don't have a dormant mentality. Go to Christ in prayer and confront those things which are physical within your relationship. Confront them physically and yes, respectfully. Because you are so important. You are very, very important, guys. 
are you are you are so important all of you guys are so important let us learn to live together and respect each other you understand let us learn to love each other and get away from violence let, let's get away from this evilness of wanting to oppress each other let us get away from it that is not the mindset of god and guys trust me if you are standing here and you have an oppressive mentality god does here let me tell you there are people who are true christians out there and when they pray this is your time to repent and stop that the lord says yes do not do, uh, do don't don't go ahead against these people who are oppressing you and do revenge if you see that you are oppressing a person and they are always so good to you guys trust me if you don't repent know that the vengeance is the loss uh, this is not a threat this is just a fact some people pray prayers that work you understand and you just don't play with children of god guys just let us get rid of this mental uh, 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 oppression mentalities so that you know like in future there will just be nobody who abuses anyone it is very possible it is very very possible you know our god is alive and it is very possible let us get rid of those things you know if it's a stronghold from somewhere within the family lines let us get rid of it and pray against it in jesus mighty name confront that which you can for confront in the physical and then those you cannot do that are beyond you let the lord do with the 16 days of activism against violence, you know, gender-based violence, I'll just say, guys, know that you're not a dermot. It just starts from you knowing that I am not a dermot. My human dignity as an individual, whether I possess certain possessions or assets that are recognized in the community, or as if you have those assets, then you deserve respect. It means nothing, but my identity and my unity i mean sorry my dignity as a person is what actually matters for the fact that i'm a human being nobody is entitled to make me a doormat you understand you are so much of an individual you are so loved by the lord continue doing good to them and still stand up and tell them no i disagree with what you're doing to me if they are not, not talking to you properly, you tell them, no, that's not the way to talk to me. I'm also a person. However you rate me is your business day. But just don't be so evident as to my face because I am important to me. Guys, wear the armor of the Lord so that you can be able to boldly proclaim these things and don't let the enemy toss you around. Know that you are so important. Know that you don't deserve to be abused. You know that you deserve to be loved. Because you are so special and there is no one who is as special as you are. And for the fact that God created you, you were born into this world. Know that your purpose, which is so unique, is so important. And no one has the right to come and hinder you from living and being. Stay blessed and know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Continue being beautiful. Continue on looking good and continue on praising the Lord. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised. Amen and bye-bye.